Let's see the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Time for us to take you through the pages of our national dailies and uh, we call it Off the Press. And a big shout out to our paper vendors for making these papers available. We have Jide Johnson who joins the conversation in no time. Jide, it's good to have you join us. Good morning, Messi. Good morning, Kofi. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to do this with you guys. All right, then. Uh, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper. That's what we start with this morning. And the banner caption says, APC Convention, Buni endorses Bellows actions and moves to Dow's tension in party. Uh, it's a bold caption on the leadership this morning. Keteke members, stakeholders, Beaker over Akpan Udoyedege. Ten committee members issue him sack later. Uh, there should be sanction for flouting... President Mohammed Buhari's order, this, this, uh, the riders you find underneath, and troops kill another 100 bandits in Niger State. I won't resign until 2023, Malami replies critics. And fuel scarcity, high, ten, uh, fuel scarcity, high price or high diesel price, federal government to sanction saboteurs. I mean, this is what Niger said. Who are the saboteurs? We need to know. 2023, Atiku picks... PDP presidential form. Hours after leaving office, EFCCRS, Obiano, and uh, federal government raises fresh $1.2 billion, $1.25 billion through euro bonds. This is what you find on the leadership this morning, and that's the much we can take. Let's turn attention to the Punch newspaper with uh, these headlines, the big one there. Nigeria borrowed 6.64 trillion naira, serviced debt with 2.93 trillion naira in 2021, says the Debt Management Office. I think we need to go over that again so it sinks in. Nigeria borrowed 6.64 trillion naira, serviced debt with 2.93 trillion naira in 2021, says Debt Management Office office. Experts dons warn federal government as public debt stock hits 39.56 trillion naira. Economists warn of repayment problems hard times ahead. More from the punch. Telco's mall tariff increase as diesel price skyrockets. Details on page 23. Solidos warning as Anambra governor retains Obiano's SSG. APC in race to hold March 26 convention battles in junction. PCR tests for travelers fraudulent probe NCDC ministry is coming from a World Health Organization convoy. Envoy rather. Gunmen invade Kaduna community, abduct 47 in midnight raid. PDP handling face off with WK peace achievable, says Obasaki. Church found out wanted by the FBI for wire fraud arrested in Enugu. If a indigenous protest as OAU names Bamiri 12th VC. EFCC picks up US bound ex governor Obiano at Lagos Airport. Suspected female ritualist arrested in Quara. Uh, cash recovered male Vista fleas. And final one Northern Bismen by 40 million naira PDP presidential form for Atiku Abubakar on page 8. It's not to see if he cannot afford to buy as many as he wants. Away from the punch newspaper, we take a look at The Guardian. And the Guardian says, Bani returns as CECPC sacks Akpano Doedege. Uh, that's boldly written. March 26th, National Convention remains sacrosanct. With dealings with shortages, Russia and Ukraine conflict raises, uh, rises costs. And you also find that Tiku picks 40 million Naira presidential farms as Tamberwell intensifies consultation. Now, away from that, EFCC arrest Obiano at Lagos Airport. Government plans new trade policy over Russia and Ukraine war. And federal government going tough on fake news. Malami wants journalists. Important. And Saludo at inauguration six dialogue with IPOP, ESN, and Masop others. That's also another header interesting this morning on the Guardian newspaper. And just before we move away from the Guardian, you find fuel supply, Nigeria paying for 30 years negligent pipeline 
airline tickets, uh, air tickets near 120,000. And that's what you find this morning on the Guardian newspaper. Let's quickly turn attention to the final one, the Daily Independent with the uh, big headline, uh, Confucian as APC. In APC, as in fighting rocks caretaker committee, confusion in APC as in fighting rocks caretaker committee. The following writers to that headline Members claim sacking John James Akpano Dodege. Nobody can override Buhari's directive, CECPC scribe. Governor May Malabuni backs Governor Sani Bellows action talk about surprises there more from the daily independent nigeria's public debt rises to 39.55 trillion now aviation fuel 72 hours after airlines marketers yet to agree on new price how nigeria can tackle three trillion annual post harvest losses as elections near Elumelu asks nigerians to hold leaders accountable tambo reveals how PDP can win the 2023 presidential election. 2023 Northeast Business Forum buys presidential form for Atiku. I hope J.D. Lee Johnson is not laughing off, off screen. Bianca slapping Obiano's wife. Solodo apologizes for breach of protocol at inauguration. Promises to implement Solodo solution based on five pillars. And EFCC arrests Willie Obiano at Lagos Airport. Um, small matter of four billion naira being withdrawn in one day from the coffers of the state. It's now time to bring in at this point a uh, senior lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Jiri Johnson. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Johnson, Dr. Johnson. Good morning, um, Kofi, and good morning to Mercy, and good morning to the viewers all over the world. All right, let's uh, get things started with a look at the, the big one on the front page of the punch. Um, why, are, why are Nigerians surprised, especially the, the economists and the experts? You know, why are, are they surprised that the nation is neck, neck, neck deep rather in debt? Because, I mean, we saw that the economic policy, probably the only economic uh, blueprint of this administration has been to borrow to fix its problems. They've gone to the euro bond market in recent times to borrow US dollars so they can buy petrol to come subsidize to Nigerians in Naira, which we're going to end up paying back, which is stupid. Sorry to use the word. So this headline here, Nigeria borrowed 6.464 trillion Naira in service debt with 2.93 trillion Naira in 2021. Um, it seems we are embarking or we are operating a Ponzi scheme economy where we borrow from Peter to pay what we bought, we took from Paul. Um, um, Mr. Johnson, your thoughts on this? Well, it's very clear that um, there's no clear direction with respect to this present administration economic policy other than to borrow. And then when well, you can borrow for investment, when you borrow to invest the money in projects, economic projects that will generate revenue for you to pay back your debt. It's understandable. Uh, every nation borrows, America borrows, Russia borrows. But the difference with the borrowing in Nigeria and that of other Western world and other developing economy is that they borrow for investment, whereas we borrow for consumption. We borrow money to fund a lifestyle we cannot afford. You borrow money to build infrastructure, not infrastructure that will lead to further development and opening up of your economy, but you borrow money to do basic infrastructure. And if you liken that to an individual, it's like an individual that is borrowing money to fund his own lifestyle. It's, it's expensive taste. And then he's not borrowing money to improve his business. His, his experience will be like that experience of Nigeria. So like you said, it shouldn't come to anyone as a surprise that um, the various economic hardship we are facing, because we have been borrowing money without those money actually injected into the economy to drive our economy and to, to, to build the pillars of the productive uh, uh, elements of our economy. So for me, it's, 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 it's nothing surprise. My only surprise that I'm shocked that people are shocked with respect to this, because if you listen and you do an overview of what expert has said over, 
have said over the years, of what commentators have said, of what social critics have said, with, the, with respect to how this government is borrowing money, then you know why we find ourselves in this dire street. Because for me, I can't reconcile all the money this administration claims to have recovered from corrupt public officials and corrupt civil servants in the last, under the Jonathan administration and previous administration before Jonathan, with the fact that the same government went ahead to borrow money and is still borrowing money till date. We borrow money to build the railway line from, <clears throat> from, from Kanu to Maradi. We didn't borrow money to build a railway line from, from, from Calabar to Lagos so that we have the uh, cross-Atlantic trade route. I don't know the kind of business you can have in the Sahara, uh, sub-Saharan trade route compared with the kind of business you have in the cross-Atlantic from the coast of Calabar to the coast of Lagos, the kind of businesses you do. So it's, 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 it's not surprising to me that um, we are having what we, we are having. If, if I ask you, who is the Minister of Economic Planning for, for Bari? Who is the Minister for Finance? Um, for for, for our, our antecedents, where is she? The economic team of this present administration. No one knows who they are and how often do they meet, and what type of policy trust they have for this particular administration who, that has already got into the twilight of this. We should just manage this administration till the end of next year, because after almost seven years, there is no clear cut direction with respect to economic policy. One. There's no clear cut direction with the with the with, with the respect to social policy too. There's no clear cut direction with respect to even um, security, which was one of the major major reasons why this administration was 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 elected in 20, in 2015. You read the story: bandits killed 100,000, uh, uh, abducted 100, 100 people in Niger, uh, 47 people, 47 people in Kaduna. Um, a lot of Nigerians are troubled and worried about what is happening in Ukraine. Whereas we have our own Ukraine right here in Nigeria. Such situation there. Really sad. Um, uh, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper this morning. It talks about Boni's return as the CECPC sacks Akman Odoi Dege. I mean, with all that's unfolding in the uh, APC ahead of the convention, are you really surprised? Mercy. Lord will have mercy on APC. Um, I'm not surprised. One, if you read, you see that the forces that are, one, you see the letter written by the president earlier this week. The letter was addressed to the governor of, the governor of um, Kebi State, who happens to be the chairman of the governor's forum, where the president was making a passionate appeal for the status quo ante to remain and so that APC can have its convention put the normal structure and the proper structure in place by the instrumentality of that letter you will think that Boni coming back to nigeria Boni will will ensure that um as he's returning as the as the chief as the chairman of the kadika committee also akbanodui returns as the secretary because that's what the letter states expressly but you know politics is about interest and a critical component of politics is intrigues. Intrigues and um, power play. We are witnessing the power play and the intrigues. If not for the intervention of INEC writing APC, telling APC that they do not recognize Belu and that um, the convention is only um, Buni and Udu, Akpan Udu, they, they can write them with respect to the convention that they want to hold on the 26th. Buni himself it was almost gone. Was almost gone so it is it is it, it just buy a, grab a popcorn and your carbonated soft drink and then if you don't do carbonated soft drink whatever drink you drink just sit down by your couch and be ready for more drama as we witness the confusion in in the two major political parties i call it apc house of commotion apc house of commotion the interesting thing is that pdp is not an excuse 
because if you look at the parts and the drama between Wiki and um, and the governor of 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 a do state of Baseki, um, all those drama is not about the interest of the people. They are just fighting for their interest and who controls the delegates to the national convention. Everything you are seeing in APC is is. Is it is also a reflection of what will happen as events unfold in PDP because the nominations for various political offices will happen in the next in the next two two three months. So just grab your popcorn and be ready to watch the drama as it as 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 it all as unfold both in APC and in in in, in PDP. Really interesting. Uh, I think it's good you've already gone to the next one, which you were about to bring up, which is uh, the fact that um, you can never uh, lay your life down for these politicians because um, you have uh, uh, Obasaki and Wiki who were going at each other. Now it seems that they're trying to douse attention. Um, th thank you for that, G.D. Johnson. Let's go over to look at uh, the, the fuel supply situation in the country, to Nigerians and even to the airlines as well, uh, who are crying out. Uh, with the front page of the um, the leadership on Friday has this headline, Fuel scarcity, high diesel price, FG to sanction saboteurs. Fuel scarcity, high diesel price, FG to sanction saboteurs. And then um, you look at uh, the front page of the Daily Independent, Aviation Fuel, 72 hours after airlines, marketers yet to agree on new price. Um, I'm going to say in Lagos where we are, uh, the queues seem to have re turn to almost the levels they were in the weeks gone by. Your thoughts on these headlines? Well, um, if you see the headline in Guiding, I talked about um, Nigerian paying the price for 30 years of neglect of pipeline. Um, and as a result of that, we have seen that there is um, disruption in the supply of um, petroleum products across all users and marketers and various categories both diesel um um kerosene and then no one is even talking about kerosene because the the rich can afford to buy their liquefied gas their cooking gases but if you look at the price of kerosene it's, it's out of the reach of an average an average average man and then the aircraft are crying they are crying and expressing what other nigerians have been experiencing for many many years and what an average household has been experiencing in Nigeria for many, many years. We neglect the pipeline. What is the reason? What is the hold that Russia has over Germany? The hold that Russia has over, over Europe? What is the first reason why Russia invaded Ukraine? Because Ukraine, critical part X, um, Nord Stream 2, is a pipeline that has been constructed by Russia that passed through the Nordic quarters to get to Europe by passing the mainland and going through the sea to supply the European corridor. You recall there was a point in time that the pipeline that passed through um, that passed to Ukraine to Europe, Ukraine has locked it when they had one crisis with, with, with Russia. What was the reason behind the rise in in the price of gas, which is petroleum products in the United States of America? The Keystone pipeline that was that was approved under Donald Trump was cancelled by Joe Biden. So pipeline, with even the much talk about alternative energy, we have seen that this fossil fuel energy from fossil fuel and it is still is still a key component part of sourcing for energy in the world. Now we have not invested in. You don't a, a serious country transport their petroleum product using pipeline. It is the cheapest. It is the safest. You don't have this kind of um, crisis you have that tankers will tumble on a dollar bridge in Lagos <laughs> and it will kill many people. It, it has happened this year. It, it happened last year. It will still happen again because you travel, you transport most of your petroleum product using trucks. We are asked, pipeline is the cheapest and the best form of what you use to distribute your petroleum products. Because if you had the overhead cost of the transportation cost to the product itself, definitely the price will go up. So for 30 years, we have neglected that. The airlines are crying because they can't, they can't get the, 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 the fuel they require to fly the aircraft. There's another thing on the airline themselves. They are just criminal. When they got the fuel, what is the prices of the ticket? The airline 
it's in Nigeria. I don't pity them. That's my opinion. I might be wrong. I don't pity them because they've eaten their cake and they've eaten their butter before their bread. Because if 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 you are if if you are used to flying locally, you know how the airline are quote unquote irresponsible. They cancel flight anyhow, and then when once you are late. And once they delay your flight, they won't fulfill their own part of the deal. But once you are late for the check-in time, they will close the door and you have to pay through your, through your noses. What is the economic sense of flying 10 people when you could fly 100, or flying 10 people at 120,000? G.D. Johnson, the, let's also take a look at this one. It concerns you. I mean, uh, it concerns you and I as well. Uh, it talks about federal government going tough on fake news, and that's what Malami wants journalists. You see, the word one, journalist, it, it's not within the purview of, of um, Malami to say, to talk anything about fake news. His own responsibility is to look at the dispensation, the administration and dispensation of justice. That should be left for the regulatory body. You have a regulatory body. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an overkill for him to be putting himself with fake news. The, the court system and the regulatory bodies that we have are, 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 are equipped to deal with those with to deal with those issues. And as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing like fake news because if it is fake, it is not news. What we have is misinformation and disinformation. And if you look at it in actual sense, those that engage more in disinformation and misinformation are actually public officials globally. Globally, if you've done a lot of trainings on fact-checking and the rest of it, it is government itself that is a perpetrator of disinformation and misinformation not providing the people with the accurate information they require part time hiding under the guise of national security state security and the rest and the rest of it so he Malami does not have he doesn't fall within the purview of his office to be talking about about that for me i think it's an overkill and it's an overshoot of his of his responsibility there's nothing like freak news what okay. is this information if it is quick it is not news all right, that, that, that should be a, a lecture session from the chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. I think we've been taking our notes. <laughs> we should come for, for a certificate from you. But um, back to your comment, Jerry Johnson, on the um, state of the nation, especially as regards the fuel supply situation, the scarcity, and the costs of Jet A1 for, um, for the, the, the airlines, uh, high prices in diesel and all that. Uh, I'd like to link that, those comments to a story on the front page of the Daily Independent um, talking about what Tony Lumilu put out on social media. And the headline in front of the Daily Independent goes thus, um, as elections near, Lumilu asks Nigerians to hold leaders accountable. But he was particular about the fact that businesses are suffering. Um, he says, quote, how can we be losing over 95% oil production to thieves? Um, look at the Boni terminal that should be receiving 200,000 barrels of crude oil daily. Instead, it receives less than 3,000 barrels, leading to uh, the operator, Shell, to declare force majeure. You, you, your thoughts on the Lumilu statements uh, regarding the economy? Well, it's important for us to be the watchdog of the Nigerian society, that everybody becomes a stakeholder, not just an ordinary uh, member of the Nigerian society. And that on own responsibility lies with us first and foremost as the media and then for us to equip the citizenry to ask questions now what we have we have seen the development of patronism and not journalism we have seen that people that people we see people interviewing governors and interviewing president asking patronizing questions and not journalistic questions questions that one at the truth that put someone on the top spot so we have become patrons of the political class and the economic class, rather than be journalists representing the entire the entire people and being the voice of the voiceless, the eyes and the ears of of, 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 of the people. So I agree with him. I agree. I agree with me. But the question you ask is, Tony, me, 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 say, what investment is he making to ensure that we have civic we have civic education, that people are educated? What is foundation? I don't know. He has a, he has a foundation on entrepreneurial development. But if you don't deal with the politics, if you invest your money and government comes up with one policy, it will destroy your entire business. If you destroy it, just one policy from our assault from government will destroy your investment. So that's why we said there's a particular theory in the media which you talk about, which is the massive theory. 
talking about who controls the means, the means of production. It's called the political economy theory. Now, it's, the politics shapes the economy. No matter how powerful you are economically, for example, one policy from government can destroy the entire business of Dangote. Just one policy of government. So the the, the people investing money on, on entrepreneurial development should also understand that civic education is a critical component part of economic development. They should make there should be foundations, different foundations that make investment on citizen empowerment, citizen education, and improving citizen participation. Since the National Orientation Agency, which is the agency of government that they start with responsibility, has gone more upon deliberately because it serves the purpose of the ruling class as long as the citizens are not aware and conscious of their rights. So, but private individuals, philanthropists, need to come in and invest. You know, we have the Ford Foundation, we have the Soros Foundation, different foundations in America making investment on citizens education and empowerment and i think we need that i agree with him but we need investment in that so that you see for example there's nothing stopping a foundation from looking for people with critical minds let's go across all the campuses in nigeria and educate educate okay so we seem to have a freezing screen uh, i'm sure we will try to get back to Julie johnson uh, uh miss dr johnson can you hear us please all right, we'll, we'll try and reconnect with him, and immediately that's possible, we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll come back. But Mercy, it's uh, quite an interesting um, analysis. We hear that Jerry Johnson is back. Uh, Dr. Johnson, uh, can you hear us, please? I can hear you. I can hear you. Fantastic. Light so clear. please continue with your point. So, so we, we make investment, critical investment, in going to secondary schools across the nation, telling them on the need for them to get engaged and participate in the political process. Go to university, letting them know to get engaged and and also educate journalists who are the watchdog, who are the ears and the eyes of the public. Um, not to ask patronizing questions, but to ask tough questions, generally developmental questions, questions that will develop the Nigerian the Nigerian the Nigerian society not to see themselves and being part and parcel of the establishment, not anti-establishment, but a progressive element that bring about change in, in, the, in, the, in the society. So we, we, we need that to see themselves as being patriotic and not being partisan. We have seen a situation whereby journalists have become partisan. They have become part and parcel of the system they are supposed to criticize, the system they are supposed to evaluate, to put a critic on, but they see themselves as a journalist is first and foremost an independent mind, one, and is patriotic. So the, the level of patriotism, your loyalty should be to the nation, not to one interest. For example, why no one has asked? Um, you see people keep talking about uh, Atiku has split the form, Tinubu has split the form. You know these people, they were lying their interest. Now, during the course of this week, Tinubu visited, who would have thought that Tinubu would visit um, Omishore, Omishore, if you are from my part of the world and you know the political divide that Tinubu will visit Omishore, and then you see that uh, towards the tail end of the week, Wike and Obaseki are trying to reconcile their, 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 their differences, which is their interest. However, as journalists, we need to train the citizens for them to look beyond facts, ask tough questions. Why do you want to become president? What's your economic template? None of them. None of them has told us how they are going to solve this energy problem, this power problem. None of them has told us on how to solve this uh, fuel problem. They've not told us how to resolve the issue of ASU, that has education. They've not told us what they are going to do with critical infrastructure. All they are telling us is that I want to be president, and you see journalists falling head on each reporting it, and you see citizens running, 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 running after them. And that's that would not bring about development in our society. You will not bring about development in our society. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you so much, G.D. Johnson, for being part of the show this morning. We do appreciate your time. Merci. It's a pleasure.
Thank God for having mercy on me. <laughs> and that's it. Judy Johnson is a chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Uh, thank you so much. It's been an interesting, you know, time. Yes, indeed it has. It has. And uh, up next, we'll take a look at what's uh, happened today in history. And when we return, we dive straight into a first major conversation. Stay with us. Thank you.